What comes to your mind when you think of happiness? Let me guess. Spending time with your family? Having a vacation? Right? And what comes to your mind when you think of success? Earning a lot of money? Getting famous? Right? But let me ask you this. Why are meaning of success and happiness differs. Does it mean that we have to choose? If we want to be successful, we have to let go of our happiness? Or if we want to be happy, then we have to let go of success? At least that's what I thought. Let me share my story with you. I was born in a very small town named Kher in Aligarh, Uttar Pradesh. I was first born to my parents. And as a first born, my parents prayed for a child who is smart, talented, and if they were lucky enough, to make a name in the world. And then I was born. <laughs> I was neither smart nor talented. And top of it, I was sinistral. Just a fancy term to say, I was left-handed. I used to comb with my left hand, I would eat with my left hand, I would play with my left hand, and it was all when it all went unnoticed until one day there was a puja in the house. And when you imagine this, mind you, I lived in a joint family. So when you imagine this, imagine a big bunch of people sitting together. And that day, my parents asked me to light the tear. And no sooner I extended my left hand, everybody stopped me at once. No, beta, we use our right hand in the puja. And then the same thing happened during the prasad time. I reached out with my left hand and everybody stopped me again. Beta, we use our right hand. And it seemed like right hand is more auspicious and pure in our religion, right? And it was still fine. But then my mom saw me writing with my left hand. That day, she hired a home tutor to make me switch to my right hand. Now, why did she do that? She did it because she was partially left-handed herself and her mother was too. And they both had went through a lot of awkward moments in their life. And she didn't want me to go through the same. At that point, it seemed fine because kids don't like to be the odd one out, right? But now when I think of it, only 10% of the population write with their left hand. I lost my uniqueness there. Why? Because I didn't want to be the odd one out. Now talking about my school life, well, it's not really the page of my life I enjoy reminiscing over. I was academically weak. When it comes to English grammar, I couldn't spell a thing. When it comes to history, I couldn't remember the dates, the years, the murders, the riots, anything. And when it came to mathematics, don't even ask. My teacher thought I could barely pass the exam. And what I really enjoyed was creative work, going out with my friends, playing there, playing outdoors, everything else but studies, sitting at one place, reading books, studying. I did not enjoy that. But surprisingly, it's still mysterious to me, all the other kids of my age were really good at it. They were all getting good grades. And again, I was the odd one out. And in the school life, I realized that you cannot always be odd one out. It's very difficult. So I learned to be studious. I started aiming for good grades and eventually looked for a good job. Essentially, I was part of the rat race. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with the rat race, except even if you win, you are still a rat. Now, coming to my professional life, 
I started working. I got a good job in a multinational company. I was working there for many years. It's 2020. It's been eight years now. I'm still working like a, I mean, like everybody else. And I was not happy. I was working hard, but I wasn't feeling good. I was giving my best, but I wasn't satisfied with my work. Everything seemed so exhausting. Life felt difficult. And on March 21st, 2020, I received a call from my office and they said, Harshita, you will temporarily working from home. We all will be temporarily work working from home. And it was the time when COVID was at its peak. People were losing their job. And I thought to myself that if I lose this job, I don't know anything else. What will happen to me? I was really sad. And when I was working, I came across this quote from a motivational speaker, Jim Rohn. And it goes like, learn to work hard on yourself than you do on your job. Because if you work hard on your job, you will make a living. But if you work hard on yourself, you'll make a fortune. And that's the time I realized I was never working on myself. I was working all the things that were external to me, but I never really focused on myself, what I really could do. And that was the day I decided I'm going to change my life. I'm going to turn things around. And today, I'm here to share those three principles that helped me turn around my life. Within applying these principles, in the first year, I got a new job with a better salary. The next year, I got a promotion. As my happiness level was increasing 10x, so was my bank balance. And more than anything, it helped me come out from the biggest fear of my life. Would you believe it if I told you that if you had invited me on this stage four years back, I would have fainted. And if not that, I would have at least pretended to be faint because anything that would spare me the horror of stepping on the stage. You know what I used to do for my office meeting? Anytime if there were more than five people in the meeting on the Zoom call, I would sit with a script, read word to word from it. That's how intense my fear was for public speaking. And these three principles helped me come out of that fear. The principles that I'm about to share with you now. Number one, mindset shift. I had a very limiting mindset. I always looked at the glass half empty, not half full. I always looked at my weaknesses, never focused on my strengths. So I knew something needed to change within. I needed to change my mindset. And for that, I started reading books. I started reading all the good books that could actually help come out of that limiting mindset. Now for you, it may not be books. It could be something else. Maybe podcast knowledge is available everywhere. You can look for people who really inspire you. So whatever it takes should be the approach. Whatever it takes, I'm going to change my mind mindset to bring possibilities to my life. I also started writing gratitude journal because I was not so grateful for the things that I had. So while gratitude journal helped me stay thankful for the things I already have, books expanded my mind to new possibilities. So mindset shift is the first principle. The second one, have a plan. Well, all my life I had wishes. I had a lot of wishes, but the problem with wishes is that they do not always come true. So we need to have a plan. In 2020, I started writing my plan, a long 10 years plan. And you know what I wrote for year 2024? I wrote, and I remember this explicitly because it took me so much courage to write it there, but I did it anyway. I wrote that in 2024, I'm going to give a TEDx talk.
I'll quote my favorite speaker, Jim Rohn, again. He said, if you go to work on your goals, your goals will go to work on you. If you go to work on your plans, your plans will go to work on you. Whatever good things we build, end up building us. And that's what happened to me. My plan worked for me. So have a plan. Very important. The third one. We first, right, we first have our first principle, then we second have a plan, and the third one we have is discipline. I again quote my uh, favorite speaker, please don't mind, he, this is the man who changed my life, right? I can't stop quoting him. And he says, we all must suffer one of the two pains in life, pain of regret, or pain of discipline. Pain of discipline weigh ounces. Pain of, pain of regret weigh tons. Now, I have all these goals. I wanted to do so many things. I want to read all the good books. I want to have a good fitness regime. I wanted to start a new language, learn public speaking. That too, with my full-time job. So I needed to have a good routine. For that, I needed to be disciplined. And I learned this technique of starting small. And you know, as I mentioned, I was academically weak child. I did not enjoy books as much or studying at one place. So it did not come to me naturally to read books. I had to develop interest. And how I did it? By starting small. I decided I would just read two minutes and I could only finish two pages. Now let's do a little bit maths here. Yeah, I got a little better at maths along the way. So let's assume if, we ha if there's a book that has 300 pages, on an average, let's say a book has 300 pages, right? And I read two pages each day. In one year, I should be able to finish two books, two and a half books. And in four years, I should be able to finish eight to 10, ten books, right? But you know how many books I finished in the last four years? More than 60. And I am not counting any audiobooks here. And that's the magic of compounding. When you build a discipline, it will help you bring the compounding effect. You will be able to achieve way more than you thought you will be able to achieve. That's the power of it. And once you have a small win in your favor, the universe will he help you get another small win. And that's how the chain, chain reaction goes for you. So it's very, very important that we have that discipline in our lives. And with that discipline, I was able to do so many things. I was able to come out of this biggest fear of my life of public speaking. When I used to see people on stage, I would, I wish I had that talent. I never knew I could, I would be able to ever do it, right? From somebody who did not even have a social media profile to somebody who is now a content creator. All thanks to these three principles, right? And let me tell you this, it's easy to not be the odd one out and follow everybody else, right? It's very easy to live by somebody else's rule. But honestly, life is too short to live by somebody else's rule. Create a life that reflects your truest desire, your truest passion. And when you do this, you will not just be happy, but also be successful. You will not have to choose. And when you do so, you will inspire other people to do the same along the way. Thank you.